Hey, this is Matt once again. This is the third time I'm trying to record this because I can't get my my words out there that this movie fucking sucks. This is a paid request. Thank you so much for that. And to do the shameless plug, if you want to request any type of review, topic, re-review, commentary, randomness, out of the blueness, video game playthrough, reaction, re-review, topic, you just send it to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I also have a cash app because some people have asked about that. Just feel free to ask. Let's talk about this fucking movie. I don't know why I'm so mad, because I knew it was going to happen. I guessed it. Oh, Matt, you're so cynical. I was fucking right. Is this worse than Expendables uh, 3? Yes, it is, Sally. Is it worse than The Flash or Indiana Jones 5? I don't know. That's how bad it is. I was very disappointed. I don't like John Wick 4. Yes, I would say John Wick 4 is better than this movie. <laughs> but I don't like that film for the reasons I said. I was very disappointed in John Wick 4. Is it way better than this? Absolutely. I hate saying that, but I gotta be honest. This is one of the worst films of the year. I don't know where it would be. I have to, I'm gonna wait till the end of December to f figure that out. This has been one of the shittiest years in film history. I kid you not. I think most people would agree this has been one of the worst years for movies. Ever. Forever. Ever. We've had a terrible Ninja Turtles film. Terrible Indiana Jones film. This is my opinion. Terrible Flash film. Terrible superhero films. Terrible Scream film. Terrible Evil Dead film. Everything I heard about the Exorcist sounds terrible. And a terrible Expendables film. And it's sad because I remember watching the first film in the theaters. And is it the best movie ever? No. Was it a great experience? Yes, in the theater. I had a good time. Are there flaws? Yes. There's dodgy CGI. Bit too much shaky tan for my taste. But there are ways we could improve on it. And had a good basis. Dolph Lundgren being serious. Blowing people's bodies in half. A little low. Terry Crews with the automatic shotgun. The, the tone seemed like the tone was right. That tone should have been consistent throughout the franchise. Didn't Arnold and Bruce for cameos. We got Stallone with Jet Li. We got Jet Li fighting Dolph Lundgren. Yes, the director's cut. The fight's a bit better edited. The yeah, director's cut. Even the trailer, boom lay, boom lay, boom. It was exciting. It was fun. It was imperfect, but it was a good basis, and it went downhill after that. I'm not a fan of the second film, but it's better than three and four. Van Damme's the best part, but I wish he had much more to do. I wish his fight with Stolen was much better. Uh, but Sally. That's better than these. Spumbles 3, I like Bill Gibson. I like Harrison Ford. But Wesley Stipes, it's cool to see him in there, but he was wasted in it. And Sally, that is better than this. Does this look the cheapest? It had the most pathetic team. Pathetic. I don't know how this cost $100 million. People could say paychecks, but who the fuck got paid in this movie? Can you get the money back? Return to sender. They didn't deserve to get paid that much money. You didn't do your job. You don't deserve that. Get the money back. Put into the production. Because, yeah, when I think of it, Spongebob's, I think, get the guy who directed Need for Speed, the movie. And again, you want to say it's paychecks. They didn't deserve it. You got ripped off. Studio, but just the rest of the movie, the sets look cheap. Most of the action scenes has this obvious terrible green screen. These even the bit where Jason Statham, like Stallone's knock on Statham's door and Statham opens and Stallone's standing there. I swear the background of that is green screen. 
with Stallone where he's standing. Most of the movie takes place on a ship. So it's like a shitty version of Under Siege. And every outside shot, it's like, or at least 90% is just background, terrible green screen. Like it was a direct-to-video Steven Seagal film. I'm surprised Steven Seagal was not in this. He would fit right at home. The villain, equal ways from the Ray Redemption, completely wasted in this. When he has fight scenes, there's some choppy editing and shaky. You just say there's some of that in the first film. Okay, didn't need to be, but it, that was still handled better than this. The action scene, especially in the finale, the third act, was handled much better than this. And that's 2010. This is 2023. I think you will learn a bit more. And it didn't. In fact, it went backwards. And it's just pathetic, the team that we have here. Stallone, who's almost 80 years old. He's at the beginning of the film, he's at the end of the film. He barely has anything to do. Statham is definitely the lead. And at times, this felt less of a Spendables movie and more of a Jason Statham film. And a shitty one at that. It's sad that the trailer for that movie, The Beekeeper, granted, it showed the entire film <laughs> in his trailer. But that trailer was more exciting and more fun than this movie. And that looked like a bigger budget than this movie. Again, that trailer showed the entire movie, I guarantee you. So, okay. Thanks for spoiling the whole film. But it still was more fun to watch that than this movie. So, Stallone, Statham. Who else? Dolph Lundgren? After the first film, for some reason, they want to turn into a joke. The second film, the first film, he shoots a guy, the guy's body blows in half, a little low. He's a psycho, you know if to trust him or not. Then it's like, oh, he's talking about eating well ass in the second film. He's talking about nothing, really. He didn't do anything in the third film. Here, he needs glasses, so he's Velma from Scooby-Doo. And he's got this shitty wig that they make fun of because he does some online dating. He has a couple little more moments here compared with the third film, but such a disservice to Dolph. He should be given a lot more to do. He's given nothing to do, act, say, or perform. Waste of Dolph. You have Randy Titor that I never gave a fuck about him, or his cauliflower ear. He's good in MMA, I respect him in that. He could never act. He was the worst member of the team in the first one. He should have been killed off many movies ago. He should have, he should have been killed off. As an actor, performer, he ain't worth a pot to piss in. Good in MMA, respect him in that. You belong in there, not in these movies. No one really gave a fuck about Randy Tutor, the action hero. I'm sorry. I mean, hell, it must be Howie Lawn, for fuck's sake. Who else you got? 50 Cent. Who ain't worth a dime. Mumbles. I had to have, I wish there were subtitles on the movie to understand what the hell he was saying. And he could never act. I don't even like him as a rapper. I much prefer Ice T, Ice Tube. Rest in peace, Tupac, L. Cool J, even Snoop Dogg. Fuck, I'd rather see Snoop Dogg than fucking 50 Cent. And I saw that in Day Shift. Snoop Dogg in Day Shift was better and more badass than 50 Cent in this. Day Shift, the Jamie Foxx vampire action movie. Much better movie. Much better usage of a rapper with Snoop Dogg. 50 Cent ain't worth shit. Except mumbles. <laughs> Maiden Fox, who ain't worth a fuck. She's never been worth a fuck. She'll never be worth a fuck. Show me your tits, show me your ass, or go to fuck home. Maiden Fox. She could never act. I've seen mannequins act better than her. She has no emotion in her face. So sometimes I wonder if she's a zombie. Maybe she is. That's her secret. 
Victoria's Secret. And she wears shit. And she plays Jason Stace's girlfriend because I guess Charisma Carpenter is gone, who was in the first one. And maybe she was in the second one. I guess she's gone now. With no explanation. And Mayna Foss not only is Stace's girlfriend, but she's part of the team. Why? She ain't worth shit. She can't do anything. I'm supposed to buy her as a badass? Bullshit. Show your bare ass. Or again, fuck off. Uh, there's a guy who is supposed to be... Remember Antonio Ber Banderas in the third film? I guess he had a son. And this guy, who I don't know who the actor is, is supposed to be the son. But he's more annoying, he's more talkative, and he won't shut the fuck up even more. And he's giving monologues about, you know what this is? It it's a girl leaning over you and emptying her bowels. Or her bladder, I mean, emptying her bladder. Because that's the dialogue in this movie. Then he has some random Asian chick with like blonde hair, don't know who the fuck she is, and don't care. And then Andy Garcia, as a CIA guy who gives him the mission. And you look at this team, I'm like, this is the most pathetic team you could have. Why don't you just have fucking Terra Top and uh, Gilbert Gottfried from Back from the Fucking Grave and, I don't know, Howard fucking Stern on this team. Why not have, just, why not, for fuck's sake. It's just a shit team. Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't come back because he looked at the script and said, no. Terry Crews didn't come back because I think one of the, like one of the producers or someone, the studio, something like that, is one of the guys that touched him years ago. Which I guess he was fine doing the first three movies, but not this one, so, okay. So, no Terry Crews, no Arnold. Bruce Willis, of course, he was out after the second film, and he has his dementia, Sally. Van Damme could have had a twin. That would have been a funny motif, because he's, he's been twins before. No, let's not do that. Jackie Chan doesn't want to do it. He probably wants to do a film with Stallone, but not part of a team. Jet Li, he's off doing whatever. Retired, whatever he's doing. Uh, Michael Jai White, The Rock, they're busy doing their shit, I guess. But nobody... There's no Antonio Banderas back. There's no Wesley Snipes back. No, of course, Mickey Rourke back, who was in the first one. Like, nobody decided to come back. Maybe they saw the writing on the wall, and at this point, I can't blame them. I cannot blame them. <sighs> Cheap, lame, low-budget looking, way past his expiration date, sour milk, sour grapes, sour everything. fucking garbage movie and it's sad to see this turn into such a waste of fucking space so it starts in Libya at a chemical plant equal way is comes in and his men and for some reason reason again almost every scene is like dodgy like bad green screen in the back or dodgy CGI or in equal ways is fighting. It's not that the camera's here, but it's like here from his waist up, and it's choppy. I just the director never saw the Raid Redemption as to how you should shoot this guy. I don't mean shoot like Alec Baldwin would shoot him. I'm talking about shoot the fucking camera to show what he can do. Hey, we've seen that it's stretching too. That one scene in the prison is more awe-inspiring than anything in this movie. Again, a hundred million dollars. It's not like this had ten or twenty million. Well, they can't do it. No, a hundred million. You should be able to do it. You should be like, no, you don't get paid that much. Earn it. You didn't earn it in this movie. None of the people worked on this.
And Equal Wayas wants nuclear warheads. He's working for a guy named Ocelot. I'm like, Ocelot, where the fuck is Snake? Solid Snake. Is Metal Deer around? Ocelot. Where's Metal Deer? Then it cuts to Stallone getting on a bike, leaving, and then you have the Expendables logo. And then Stallone goes to Jason Statham's place, who's with Mating Fox. Who, again, they can't add for shit. And as you can tell when they're arguing, and Mating Fox about as believable as a $3 bill. What $3 bill? Exactly. It doesn't exist, just like her acting doesn't exist. When Statham opens the door, Stallone is standing, like, in front of a fucking green screen. Like, you can't film this somewhere in an actual place. The first Expendables didn't do that. The, the movie. Sly lost the ring. So he needs Statham's help to go to this bar. How do you lose the ring? Wrestling. Arm wrestling? No, a thumb wrestling. So Stallone lost the ring in a thumb wrestling? Stick the thumbs up your ass. Sister Niebuhr style, please. And they look over and the Expendables ring is on a fucking dildo. That looks like two flesh-colored dicks on the bar. Two Number one, why is this in this bar? That's how I kind of wonder. I guess it's maybe... Does this bar go both ways? Nothing wrong with that. Progressive, I guess. But why the fuck else would you have a dildo? Like, hey, that should have been the line. Who does this belong to you? Does this belong to you or does this belong to you? But they don't say that. I don't know why they should have. Hey, no judgment. Just, you know, be PC. I don't know, make a joke out of it. But no, yeah, it's two flesh-colored dildos. And it's on one of them. I didn't think the Expendables movies were meant for those kind of jokes. It's fucking stupid. Fucking waste. This franchise was supposed to be what people from back in the day can we give like a second chance to and give their one more heyday into the sunset. Could have had, you know, Jeff Speakman, Cynthia Rothrock, Don the Dragon Wilson, Michael Dudikoff. Like, wouldn't it be cool to have Michael Dudikoff in this movie instead of Megan Fox or 50 Cent? Michael Dudikoff. Now, of course, eventually his secret weapon's a sword they would pop out of. Mark Dacascos. All these other names. No. Because we gotta get to the younger generation, because they know 50 Cent and they know Megan Fox, and they don't give a fuck. That's why the film bombed. It made, what, $8 million in its opening weekend? And it's bombing harder than Hiroshima. Because you pissed away the fan base that this was meant for. You pissed away the fan base this was meant for. You thought you were going to get to the new generation that don't give a fuck about you and never give a fuck about you. He... Sly, Statham, all you guys, the new generation does not give a fuck about you. We did. The new generation, you know what they do? They look at your movies and they laugh at it. They call films like Cobra and Rambo for Split Part 2 cheesy and corny. They watch movies of yours and they laugh at it. They mock it. Oh, yeah, this is so bad. <laughs> That's the way it is, so bad. No, I sincerely watch those films and sincerely enjoy them. I know some of you guys did too. Not every one of them. Because we're not all going to agree on the same things. And then they tried to do that in later films. Like, we gotta get to that group. Why? Why get to the group that wants to mock you and make fun of you? We were the fans. And you said we don't give a fuck about you. So fuck you too. How about them apples?
And look where it got you. Jack shit. Nowhere. In the fucking cum dumpster. Where you belong. This fucking franchise belongs, Sally. Never, ever, ever make another one. Please. Oh, they, no, they, they could always make another one. How many times have we seen... They made a sequel to that? They made a remake? Yeah, they made a remake of The Crow that they did with Bill Skarsgård and just now getting distributor? Why? Exactly, because they don't make any fucking sense. So there probably will be a fifth one, even though it won't make any fucking sense. They'll sell it to some fucking region in China. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. It's all bullshit. So in the bar, Statham's given some brass knuckles, and the fight is he hits this guy once. He, there's six people, he hits each one of them once, and they go down. There's a big guy, Stallone. He shoots something, I don't get what the fuck he shot, and there's a shitty CGI fire thing, explosion thing. I, did, I don't know what Stallone shot. Come on. Stallone flips the guy... And the guy goes backwards in the bar. The get slice ring. Go back to Eco Awayas. And why is this stuff so filmed up close and choppily edited? First they did that in Mile 22, the film he was in with Mark Wahlberg. And they did it here. It's sad that, you know, they must have seen the Raid Redemption, but they don't uh, uh, seem to understand what made that film work. And that film cost, what, a million dollars? The Raid Redemption cost, what, a million dollars? And yet that's a film, action film with fight scenes that will stand the test of time. This is a hundred million, can't approach that in the slightest. It's pathetic. So Sloan and Statham go see the rest of the shit team. Dolph, I love Dolph. I think he's one of the most underrated action stars. I love the films I Come in Peace and The Punisher and Men of War. He's ready for the retirement home, Sally. I'm glad he's getting over the cancer. I wish him the best, but dude, I get it. It was an easy paycheck. But you're letting them make a fool out of you. Here's some glasses. Oh, I need these glasses to see. I have this wig. This is online dating girl. Have you better? No, I need to keep the mystery going. We have 50 Cent, who ain't worth shit. We have Antonio Banderas' son, who won't shut up. Like I said, we have Andy Garcia. Nuclear warheads for Ocelot. You got the wrong group, Breeding Solid Snake. 50 Cent asked him ready to tour about his ear, and he explains it again. I don't give a fuck. I didn't like that in the first movie. They're on the plane. The outside shots of the plane look like a fucking direct to now direct to stream. Can't see direct to streaming because some of them like the actually has good effects. This look like some of those Steven Seagal directed video films. And Stallone and Statham are in the up front and they're looking back and the Antonio Banderas' son, the character son. Do you know what to be this means? It means she squats on top of you and releases her bladder. This is the dialogue we have here. This shit we have talking about in this movie. So they go the equal ways where he's at, his men. The So what, at this point there's only six of them? Yeah, Dolph, 50 Cent, Randy Tour, Antonio Banderas' son, Statham, and Sly. Sly stays in the plane... The other five go in, and they're in two vehicles, and you have a shitty car chase scene. 
Just every time it's up close to them, it's a terrible, terrible green screen behind them. Which you saw something like Expendables 3. And they didn't rectify that. They said they made it worse. Dolph is a sniper. He misses because he needed his glasses. But he does hit the second barrel and it blows up one bad guy's vehicle. That's one of the only things he really gets to do in the film, which is more, I could say, than the third film. Statham and 50 Cent are in each of the cars. They're both on the 50 Cal. This movie spiral is R-rated. It's R-rated. Fuck. R-rated. Hell, the, the first two felt more violent than this. Even then, it's like few and far in between with shitty CGI gore anyway. So what do you fucking do? There's a bit where 50 Cent's grabbing a guy and he fucking lifts him up like this and lifts him up like this as if you ever played the Ninja Turtles video game where they get someone they go psh, 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 psh. that's what he's doing on top of this fucking vehicle. It looks stupid. It looks ridiculous. I don't know what the fuck they were going on with that. Jason Statham gets on some from one vehicle to another, fights a guy, gets back on. Meanwhile, outside, Stallone is in the plane, shooting. Remember how cool that looked in the first movie? Where Statham was in the front, and he shoots the flare, and you see that great explosion. Nope, none of that in this. Just terrible CGI. Sloan's planes getting shot. Statham is chasing Eco away is. Stallone says, keep going, keep going, he's the mission. Statham's like, I'm gonna save you. Goes, he's too late. Eco away is shoots the plane down. The plane crashes. They go to the plane and they see what they think is Stallone's corpse. Spoiler, it's not. Because they see the corpse and the beret and the ring. Because Stallone's alive. And how he's alive... Obviously this was additional photography. Obviously this was... I didn't know whether you call it reshoot... Whatever you want to call it. This was added in after the fact. I'm sure at first they thought we're going to kill Stallone. Then Stallone's like, nah. Not going to happen. And then they changed it. It's so fucking stupid. It's so... I mean, I'm glad they didn't kill off his character. I am. Because I'm sick and tired of that trope. That's a common trope nowadays. But... I honestly would have preferred... If... He's like, I'm too old. I gotta retire. Sayonara. Says goodbye to people. And then at the end, he hears something, and he goes in one last time. I'd rather just that. He just retired, goodbye, and then that's it. Would have preferred that. Oh, hell, he goes in. He goes to a house. Statham leaves. Then the house blows up. And then you just see that Stallone maybe blew up the house on by himself. To fake his death. Like there's a secret bid. He went under. Stallone went over here. He blew up the house. See Statham sad mad. He's like sorry buddy. You'll understand later. And then comes in. That would like. What's wrong with that? Like no can't. Can't do that. Also. They're at the bar. And they, you know, Barney Memorial. So it's been enough time that this memorial's been set up. And they're toasting. You're telling me nobody else would have heard and been here? Arnold, Jet Li, Antonio Banderas, nobody else would have arrived? Obviously they didn't because they either said no or they didn't want to pay him. But I'm just saying within the story... Within the story, like, this guy is known as one of the biggest Spendables brethren, and 
There's no Mickey Rourke. Like none of these guys would come by to pay their respects. And yeah, I know why because of budget and again all that stuff. But just or just that they said no. But it just, I just mean like logically in the script. Shit writing. Same with Andy Garcia goes up and tells Statham, yeah, you're out of the team. You jeopardized the mission. You went after Stallone to try to save him. You should have gone with an equal way as and kill him, capture him. And 50 Cent's mumbling, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? What? The sacrifice didn't mean anything. Yeah. And then Dolph Lundgren gets pissed at him after the fat. But I'm sitting there going, okay, Statham leaves. Dolph's character would have fucking left too. And would have left with Statham. Because Dolph's character was from the first movie as well. Dolph seemed like he had this weird thing with you know, respect hate but respect for Barney for Stallone's character just Stallone wounded him and Dolph's like hey how's it going and you guys took me back now this could be like you know what add more to the character he could have killed me he didn't I was able to help him but I'm going to help you take care of business here and he always seemed like the rebel, the hothead anyway in the first movie. It would have made more sense on a screenwriting front for Dolph to leave and go with Statham. But no, because the writing is shit. Whoever wrote this is a fucking idiot. If you see this, I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. Shit writing. Why didn't Dolph go with Statham? If it was Statham, Statham and Dolph... I would have been more on board. Would not have saved the film, but would have upped a little bit the enjoyment. Statham and Megan Foss have a like Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of tussle. Try to be sexy, but it's R rated, but you see no tits and no ass, so fuck it. Might as well be PG 13 with that. Tame as fuck. I'm supposed to buy the Megan Fox can go toe to toe with Statham, okay? And I could have gone toe to toe with Bruce Lee. So Megan Fox is now going to lead the team, and also they add this Asian lady, whoever the fuck she is. I don't know who she is. They go to this cargo ship, and literally the second half of this movie is on this cargo ship. Speed 2 Cruise Control is a better movie than this. I can say that with a straight face. Speed 2 Cruise Control, I would rather watch than this. This made Speed 2 Cruise Control a good movie. It's not a good movie, but I'd rather watch that than this. Speed 2 actually has action scenes that are competent. It's just Jason Patrick... To me, was it the leady? It should have been Tiana Reeves, and there's other issues I have with it. But I rather watch Speed Two than this. That's how fucking bad this movie is. And the rest of the movie plays off like a shit version of Under Siege with Steven Seagal. Because Megan Fox leads the team in, and five seconds later, they get caught. Great job, Megan Fox. Actually, you know what? That's realistic. If she did lead a team in, they would get caught in five seconds. So that's the most realistic part of the movie. Kudos. And then they're out of action for a good chunk of the movie, and it becomes Jason Statham's movie. Just a shitty movie. Because Statham hasn't done a good film, in my opinion, since The Mechanic Resurrection. Fuck the maid. Fuck the maid too. Well, I didn't mind Wrath of Man, to be fair. To be fair, I did not mind Wrath of Man. I didn't mind that one. But I almost forgot it, so that says a lot. But I didn't hate it, but... I didn't mind it, but it's not a film I rewatch. 
So take that for you will. Obviously, the last one I really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed, was the Mechanic Resurrection. I don't think Statham has had the best track record lately. Hobbs and Shaw I didn't hate, but it's very, very disappointing. But sad, I'd rather watch that than this, and that says a lot. I, I did not hate Hobbs and Shaw, but it is disappointing. But that's miles better than this movie. And that's sad. But, so yeah, I guess that Hobbs and Shaw, Wrath of Man, like, I didn't mind, but again, they were, the fact that those are better than this says a lot. So Jason Statham, he's trying to get this cargo ship, he's trying to find someone, and it's Tony Jaw. Tony Jaw barely has shit to do in this movie. He's a man of peace, but he's also like, you can't take this boat. What's going on? Barney's dead. He's like, what? Okay, I'll drive you on my boat. Get to where you need. Tony Jaw drops him off. And then a chart of his Statham just doing his thing. It's Statham fucking some people up with a knife. He has his bit with a motorcycle, thinking he's Chuck Norris from the Delta Force. Motorcycle machine guns, and maybe this could be cool, but a lot of the backgrounds, especially when they're on the outside of the, the cargo, it looks. I think that's a duck. I think that even, roosters are usually pissed off. You even pissed off the neighbor's ducks. When you piss them off, you know you pissed. You're up the shit creek. Rarely are the Dutch neighbors Dutch piss. Usually it's the roosters that are pissed. Now you're you pissing off ducks? Jesus Christ. That shows how awful this movie is. They hear that I'm talking about it. But yeah, it's one of those scenes where... Shut up! I'm sure this is going to annoy people, so I'll try to... I'll be back. Sorry about that. And actually, it was not a duck. It was a guinea. If you don't know, if you don't know what a guinea is, it's not a guinea pig, but it's a different bird called guinea. But rarely see them around here, so it's either roosters or ducks. But it was a guinea. Okay. Learn something new every day. Should have known. Just like that duck must be really pissed off. He sound weird, and <laughs> that's why it's a guinea. Anyway, who gives a shit? I don't even know where the fuck I was at with this. Oh, the, the Delta Force. Because Jason Statham is with a motorcycle, shooting people on a motorcycle, as if he's Chuck Norris for the Delta Force. I'm like, you're not Chuck... Much better movie, much better action, all done practical, on set. So, this could potentially be kind of cool, but it just... Again, the dodgy CGI didn't help matters. I had just so little fucks to give on the plot, the story, the villain. E like, even Mel Gibson. I thought Mel Gibson was good in the third film. Third film wasn't good, but Mel Gibson, I just say, you know what, Mel Gibson stood out. He go away as doesn't. Because you don't really look to him for his acting. He does fine in The Raid Redemption and Headshot. Two much better films. But... His terrors isn't even much. You don't again. You don't really look to him for an intense performance. As it, oh wow, that performance really showcased on the screen. And he doesn't really get to use a lot of his physical attributes too, as much as other movies did. And you get this dumb standout where Jason Statham, and this other guy, they're going at each other on motorcycles. Statham shoots something, a plane, and he goes up, and then he turns, and the guy hits the plane, him and the plane, and this goofy, shitty CGI smorgasbord board, bleh, fly off and off the ship. It looked ridiculous. It looked pathetic. It was, oh my god, man. Like, really? They looked at this and said, okay... 
That's a goal. That's a pass. What the fuck is going on? All the other Expendables, they're still caught and trapped, and there's a thing to slide off, and Randy Couture has to piss on it. So they can open up the grate and escape. I'm on that time, Statham is shooting more bad guys, and then Tony Jaw comes in with some knives and cuts a few people. Once again, his fight scenes are not filmed that well. Consider what he could do. Consider if you've seen Ambach and the, protect, the Protector, you know what he could do. He does do his one move where he does the, the front flip as light comes down to hit the guy, but barely utilized. Kind of like Wesley Stipes in the third film. Barely utilized. So those two find the rest of their spendables. And they get, in, they get out of there. And they do a little bit of shooting of these bad guys. By this point you just don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck about this team. You don't give a fuck about these people. You don't give a fuck about what's going on. The bat drops, the green screen, everything looks cheap as hell. It looks like a film that did not belong in theaters. And then Dolph gets him on where he can't aim. He finally drinks some alcohol and boom, 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 shoots three people. That's like his second moment to shine. Randy Tour, he gets wounded. I'm like, just kill the guy off, but they don't. Tony Jaw fights a guy, and he needs the Asian lady's help, and the two of them have to fight this guy. Why? Why do you need Tony Jaw and the girl to fight this guy? It's Tony fucking Jaw. He should be able to handle this guy on his own, but they don't do that. Fifty Cent shoots some people. Megan Fox does like one of the only moves she can do, where someone grabs her and she takes her lace, swings the guy, take downs. Like one of the only moves she can do. Uh, I don't know what I don't remember what, who the what the fuck anybody else does. I think Antonio Banderas' son has a shotgun. Just inconsequential, forgettable. You don't remember a damn thing after it. Most of them get on, uh, well, okay, Statham then fights equal ways. <clears throat> Yet again, another lame fight. Jason Statham barely gets hurt. He gets a few hits on him, but no marks on his face. I miss the days where, like, John Dolla Van Damme, he would have a fight scene. And almost all the fight scenes, he'd be bloodied up by the end of it. Even you in Bloodsport. Bull Young's getting hits on him, and he's not bloodied up, but he gets blinded. Ah! Tip Bottry's getting, he's bloodied up, and he gets to come back. Attila. You don't kill your ass. Lionheart. Yeah! Da -na -na -na, da -na -na. Even Dolph Lundgren, he just shit it out of him. So good night, asshole. Good night, asshole. And then just to come back. I miss that stuff, man. They don't. It's like people today don't understand that's a primary part of the the main fight. You need your hero to take a bit of pain, so that the comeuppance and the the comeback is much more sweeter. It's not really the case, and the fights like. 90 seconds in kind of the the main hub of control center of the damn ship mostly up close and it's like 90 seconds long yeah I don't remember a fucking thing you can probably find it on YouTube you don't remember a fucking thing about this you know I know some people don't like this film but the fights in skin trade. 
a direct video film with Dolph learning Tony Jaw. Tony Jaw has a fight with Michael Jai White that is much more memorable than any fucking fight scene in this movie. And that's a movie that went straight to video. And the fight between Dolph Lundgren and Tony Jaw was more memorable. And they're ones that are, that are, they can't go too far because they're allies. That's a more memorable fight than anything in this fucking movie. I'm not saying just because of the length of time, because there's some good fights that they're short as well. But fights tell stories. That's what they've forgotten. They've forgotten that aspect, that fight scenes can tell stories on themselves, on to themselves. They don't do that shit anymore. So stabs Eco, Mayor Foss comes in, they turn, and lo and behold, the real bad guy, Ocelot, is Andy Garcia. So then Eco away is dies, and there's like 10 minutes left to the movie. So you got the guy from the Ray Redemption, he's not, he's a, he's a villain, but he's not really the main villain. <laughs> he's Andy Garcia. So the rest of the people get on Tony Jaw's boat. Jason Statham stays because there's a bomb that's going to start World War Three or something. And he tilts the boat in bad CG. People shoot at him. Then a helicopter arrives and again, bad CGI. Boom, 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 blowing up pieces of the, the top of the ship. Statham is against Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia is talking shit. The helicopter comes up and shoots Andy Garcia into CGI pieces. And Stallone. Doing the thing they did in the beginning. You could kill me. You're welcome. That worked well the first time. Did not need a repeat. It worked well in the first movie. And then... Grabs Statham, Stallone blows the shit out of the ship, so the bomb goes on and everything's fine. Then they're back to the bar. Tony Jaw's not there. Which is strange, the reason Tony Jaw did this was because, I guess he was friends with Barney. It's like, he's dead? Okay, I'll go with you. But... If that's the case, if Tony Jaw gave that much of a shit about Stallone's character, why would he not be at the bar to congratulate Stallone? Oh, I'm glad you're alive. <laughs> it's like they shot this initially, they couldn't get Tony Jaw bad. That's what it feels like. <laughs> hey, you know that guy that you went on this mission for because he died? Well, he's actually alive. You want to see him? Nah, I don't need to see him. Oh my god, this film sucks. Oh, and how did Sly survive? There's They show a scene where... <coughs> the guy at the bar near the beginning of the film... Who took Sly's ring... For some reason, Stallone had him knocked out... In the bathroom of the plane, dressed up as Stallone, dressed up in his beret, took the guy out of the bathroom, put him in the chair, put the ring on him, parach parachute out of it, that no one saw the parachute. Why the fuck did he have this guy on the plane in the first place? let alone in the bathroom of the plane, or where the hell in the first place, so I guess no one else had to use the bathroom for the entire trip. And if they did, then what? Why was he there? What would they have done? What, what was the whole purpose? Sly knew that he was going to get the plane shot down? So he knew to have this guy there? Did he perp like... What if he got shot and the plane just exploded in one go? Then what? I, I, oh my god. So, and then... The, the, oh my... That's like that shitty video game Aliens Colonial Marines, how they explain how Hicks is alive. 
So there's another guy who's bandaged the exact same way as Hicks. And then he just gets pushed back into Hicks' trial sleep. And then, boom. And then Thaven, when they landed, the fucking thing took the guy's head off. So then people assumed it was Hicks. I'm like, I'm glad Hicks is alive. I'm glad. But this is so stupid. This is, oh my, this is dumb. This is dumb. And the fucking song at the end is, The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. You know what? I prefer the version 40 hours. The boys are back. So it's not that song. It's just, uh, I've yet who's seen the... I swear I remember that in, like, what was it, Toy Story commercials? The, the song at the end of this. Which I never liked that version. Again, if I want to hear that, I want to hear the version in 48 hours. Another 48 hours. This movie is fucking garbage in every single way. Easily one of the worst films of the year. You know, I would say... Yes, I would say worse than Indiana Jones 5 and The Flash. Because of just how detrimental they've shit-canned this whole franchise. I think Mune Mayhem is still my worst of the year because I love the Ninja Turtles and I hate how they turn them into four... Not even Gen Z, it's what, what the fuck would you call them? Cum dumpsters, that's what I would call them. Four cum dumpsters that I want to put through a fucking wood chipper face first and bathe in their blood. That's what those new Ninja Turtles I'd rather do. Um, stick them in a fucking incinerator, incinerator and blow the ashes into their remains' faces. I fucking hate that Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie. Piece of shit with all the milking jokes in the world. That's number one. This would probably be number two. Not uh, Bo is Afraid. I hate that movie, but... It's The Expendables, man. This would be the film I like. And you just see how much of a worthless pit stain this has become. It's embarrassing. That's what it is. It's fucking embarrassing. As a fan of these guys... Well, Stallone, even Statham, Dolph. Embarrassing to like in the first film. Embarrassment to what its purpose was originally supposed to be. Its purpose was supposed to be, let's give the 80s, 90s guys. You know, give them a second chance. And they betrayed that aspect, and then some. Lackluster, shitty directors... Which I know the, the guy who directed the third film went on to do the Hitman's Bodyguard, which I liked. But by that point, he had only done some low budget Western, modern Western that really no one saw. So he hadn't gotten his feet wet, really. This is an embarrassment. It's a fucking embarrassment. Terrible cast. Not much of the returning people. Again, no Wesley Stubbs, no Antonio Banderas, no Mickey Ward, no Arnold Schwarzenegger. Bruce Willis, he's got the dementia. There'd be no way he'd return. <sighs> Fuck, man. Pathetic. Nobody worth his shit do. Except maybe Tony Jaw, Equal Ways, and they're given nothing to do. And the action scenes are just... Cheap, green screened garbage. It's pathetic. We'll see you later. Bye bye.